All right. Good afternoon, everyone. We are here this afternoon, and we are foiling all of our lovely glasswork. We're going to be cleaning. We're going to then pin it down, and yeah, we're gonna we're working on finishing up these pieces for this weekend. Uh, our show is three days away at this point. We have three days to work on these. Hello, Zarku. How are you this afternoon? Uh, so we're, we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine large lotus moons that we're going to work on. Um, I did grind down the uh, mini lotus moons as well. I figured while I was in the groove, in the grind, ha, I was going to get those done as well. Um, I have two of the tiny moons done. They're off in the corner. And I managed to get cut and ground uh, five of our windows. So you'll get to see those foiled today. So the next big step for me is really just to sit here and clean and wrap everything in copper foil. Um, I have centerpieces for pretty much every moon so far. Um, for the Van Gogh moon, this one needs a little bit of wire work that I'm going to dress up with a couple of, probably some amethyst crystals, but we have this fun little little skeleton guy little right here, this little bird with some way, bat wings, because, you know, birds and bat wings always go together. Uh, so, this would be going with our Van Gogh moon. I'm going to put some crystals on it, hanging from it. And this will sit right in the center, hang down. Um, this is part of our signature that we use for our lotus moons. Uh, so, the this is what the copper foil looks like that we're using. Um, yep, it's copper. It's a foil. It comes in a roll. Um, the inside of the foil is either copper or in the case of this one here it's actually a silver finish on the inside um, and the finish on the inside really goes with how I'm gonna finish the outside of the moon so if I'm gonna leave it silver I'm gonna go with the silver foil if I'm going to uh, do a copper finished moon I'm gonna choose the copper finish on the rare occasion that I decide to do a moon in a black patina, I will usually choose a black finish. However, a lot of the black finished foil tends to leave a residue after you've uh, soldered. So I don't like to use that because it just it's a mess. It's gross. Um, so we'll probably not use a black. Um, it just... It makes a mess. It doesn't look. It doesn't look as finished or as polished. It's. Um, I can get the same effect depending on the glass using a silver back foil, so I'll probably just use that if I decide that I want to do any of these in a black finish. Um, Looking at them, I think the only one I'll do in a black finish might actually be the Van Gogh Moon. And it doesn't matter what foil I use for that one because you can't see through it anyway. So I'm not very concerned. Um, I can use a silver foil on that. I have plenty of silver. Um, I did a run a couple weeks ago to one of the craft shops that sells stained glass. And I managed to buy out all of the foil that I needed. So, I'll have to do a run in a couple more weeks again. Uh, that's fine. I usually get a couple pieces of glass wool in there. Uh, see what they have in. I usually get some new charms for the magic windows that we have that we're making. Um, and, you know, if I need 
uh, chemicals or anything, they usually have something there. Um, those I usually order online. Um, but usually the charms is what I go for. Hit the clearance rack. Hit the sale aisle. Um, yeah, I get them while they're cheap. Uh, especially right now where we are really trying to start everything up and running. Um, I can't truly afford to, um, you know, drop a lot in product when I'm not making that back yet. So, but we're getting there. Um, we have a show this weekend. We have a show next weekend. Uh, we have a bunch of craft fairs, not craft fairs, but farmer's markets opening, so that'll be good. Um, but today's big focus is going to be getting the uh, large lotus moons foiled and ready for soldering, and then the windows. Um, I really want the windows open for this weekend's, uh, windows open, ha, huh? the windows ready for this weekend's open house at the Chaotic Lily in Jaffrey, New Hampshire. Um, let me bring that up real quick, actually. And I'll put that event link in the, in the chat for anyone who wants to support local businesses. Um, Where is, here we go. All right, we're gonna copy this link here. And we're gonna paste that link there. All right, so that is the link for the Chaotic Lily uh, for their event for this weekend. Um, but you can also check out their Facebook page. They have an Instagram. Uh, they were a great little shop, um, a lot of holistic stuff, uh, crystals, candles. They support a lot of artists, uh, especially some small artists like myself. Um, and again, that is the Chaotic Lily. So check them out. They're great people there. Uh, they've, you know, they saw my stuff one day, really liked what I had, and were like, we want you in our shop. And next thing I knew, I'm putting all my stuff in the shop. <clears throat> all right. Uh, we have Zarku running a quick tech thing for me. Hi, stream. <laughs> I'm just checking why something broke off the thing. Yeah, so last time we streamed, we had music running. Uh, and today we have absolutely nothing going on, so not quite sure what's up. But, you know... Um... Which pop up? The bottom right. It was working. No, it's not. Is it? Do you have an ad in your ears now? Yep. Oh, yep. Yep. There is music in my ears right now. You should have that on stream now. For some reason, your um, link stuff broke. I don't know 
want. I'll take a look at other. I got it working again. It was your um, plugin for. Um, All right, so anyone in chat, let me know if you can hear the music. Uh, if it's too soft, let me know. So my first step when doing foiling is I have to clean each piece. So I have my trusty bottle of quick clean that I use. Um, it comes in a really big bottle, so I just break, uh, empty it into the smaller, easy to use spray bottle. All right, turn the audio desktop slider up. Okay. All right, how does that sound now? Awesome. So this is much better than silence as we are going to be cleaning and foiling. Um, so the first moon I'm working on right here in this corner, I'm going to clean each piece. Um, and as I'm cleaning, I'm going to sweep up from underneath it so it sits pretty level. Um, and this is just because glass uh, tends to fly when I, um, when I cut it, uh, when it breaks. I actually had a piece uh, shatter on me yesterday or the other day when I had to, when I was grinding. Um, I was trying to uh, trim it a little closer to my draw line that I had on. And I'm like, oh, I want to make sure it's a little, a little closer so I have to grind a lot less. Well, it broke. So I had to recut it. And then I had to recut it again because I traced the wrong piece. So I wound up having that piece shatter and then there was purple glass everywhere. Um, I'm still finding pieces of purple glass where I didn't even cut the purple glass. So that's always a fun time. By cleaning it I also get off the sharpie marks that I made if they didn't come off um, while I was grinding which most tend to come off when grinding but sometimes the silver sharpie doesn't always come off and that's just because silver sharpie doesn't come off at all unless you give it elbow grease and you drench it in cleaning stuff. Gosling, hello and thank you for the follow. How are you doing today? Uh, we're just cleaning glass, getting ready for some shows, having some fun times.
um, but yeah, so I have, like, so this first moon here is, I have dubbed this my sunflower moon because of the vivid yellows in it, and then the black background, it just, it reminds me so much of a sunflower against a bright sky. And I tend to do that. I give my moons nicknames or a theme setting. Uh, it just makes it easier for my records when I'm like, oh, which moon did I just sell? I'm like, oh, the sunflower moon. I can remember which one that is. And it's also fun when someone's like, do you have anything that's like a sunflower? And I'm like, yes, yes, I do. I have a sunflower moon. And I can bring out the sunflower, like this one here and be like something like this. And they'd be like, yeah, that's awesome. Um, even though it is still the Lotus design, um, it, it's still a floral type pattern. So people will be like, oh, flowers, you know, it could be any flower at that point. You know, flower petals, depending on the person, can be any flower. Uh, and by changing the color that I'm using, I really can change the perception of what flower I want them to have, you know, I want them to really perceive it as. So this one's all cleaned up and ready for foiling. So because I'm going to be doing this in a channeling on the outside, I don't have to use as much foil now. So that's fun. I have my handy jar of push bins because it needs to be uh, pushed very nice and snug into the board so that it doesn't move around when I solder. Um, normally I have more room on my board than this, but because of how much I need to make this week, we're really pushing the limits of what this board can hold. So I just press the foil onto the edge and carefully just kind of bring it around. Now they do make tools that are supposed to make this easier. I actually have one of these. I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, so it, it can be helpful because it means you're not trying to fiddle with getting the glass perfectly even every time. It just, you put it against this rubber donut and it just, it does the work. Um, but I don't know. I, I like my methods that I have. I know they're not as fast when I need to have a lot of production. But at the same time, I know how everything is done, how everything is situated. Um, and then once the foil's on, I use this plastic fid. Uh, and I just burnish the foil nice and smooth flat. If the foil is bumpy or wavy, it's not going to hold well to the glass. Um, it's going to cause the solder not to hold and to pull off from the glass eventually, which is not great. Uh, that'll cause pieces to break, to fall, to crash to their doom. And I know a lot of people don't want that to happen, especially if they've, you know, spent 
hundreds of dollars on a glass piece and it just comes crashing down and shattering and they're like what do I do and it's like well sorry and then they have to buy a new piece and now that that's done I take two little push pins right here And this is the start of holding the moon in place. And then we do this for every single piece. Uh, this is one of the less glamorous parts about stained glass. And one of the, you know, more tedious aspects of it. But... You know, every every craft has their every craft has their parts that are that the artist says are not the the most exciting or glamorous. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. I keep checking my bird feeder. Um, I have a squirrel problem today. So I just wanted to make sure that my, my fix of uh, chili powder and um, cooking spray is keeping the squirrels away. So we'll see. Um, as of now, we're so far so good. Um, But yeah, so if anyone has any questions on what I'm doing, on the process, about, you know, how I got started, uh, any of my favorite subjects to do in stained glass, you know, feel free to ask. I'm just going to be <clears throat> foiling away. Because, drats, we've been foiled again today. And foiling is the... The tedious, the tedious part, but with this music in the background, it's, it's a good jam for what we're doing. So I'm not going all the way around the piece, as you can tell. I've left a gap open, and this is because I'm putting lead on this side. I'm going to use a lead edging, and... I don't need to cover the glass with an extra layer of foil. It's only gonna um, take up space in the lead. It's gonna leave, um, you're gonna see the foil through it. Um, I don't have to solder over the lead. The lead is there to actually take the place of the foil. So we don't need to add the foil. Um, when we're done, we line it up nice and smooth and give it an extra push pin buddy. <clears throat> uh, this will be one of our first times actually doing this method with the lead channeling. Uh, I'm excited to do it. Uh, it's going to have a really nice finish on the piece. So I'm excited for that. Um, in the long run, it's actually going to save me a lot, uh, both with not having to always solder all my large pieces. Um, it's going to save because the price of solder is going up, which I mean, the price of lead channeling will go up as well, but that's fine. Do you think one of our neighbors did just get some fertilizer today? I can kind of smell cow out there, and we're in a neighborhood that doesn't have cows, so that's a that's a fun thing. But yeah, uh, I do the same method when I use a zinc channel for my rectangular pieces. 
or square pieces. Um, which I'll be doing probably... I don't know if I'll be doing any of those next week or the week after. But I have a few small pieces that I need to get done for Art Walk. I have a lotus piece, I have uh, a moon altar piece, I guess you would call it, um, and then there is a, a lighthouse scene, which will be nice for those that like lighthouses in the ocean. So I'm working on the inside out, starting with the lotus petals, and then I'll move to the, um, the moon shapes next. Because the lotus petals are what give us the basis of our shape. Without them, we don't have this inner curve. I need to get this inner curve nice and strong so that we can get the outer curve to follow along. Right here, this is the last piece of the inner sunflower. Just gonna finish burning this, burnishing this nice and smooth. Smooth foil is key to having a good solder line in the end. So the only downside to using these push pins is after a while your fingers do really hurt. 
because push pins do not like sheetrock board. Um, especially sheetrock board that's been burned from soldering. But they're really the best for what I need them to do. But I will say, having to only foil such a tiny section is so nice and not have the entire piece of glass hidden behind foil as it would be with like a tiny piece of glass. Let me make sure we line this up with that inner curve since that's our important one. push pins on both sides so that doesn't wiggle and there we go we'll do the bottom curve even it out so I just make sure the glass is lined up in the center of the foil I want to have uh, equal amounts of foil on each side that's the big key is to make sure it's uh, when I wrap the foil around that it's equal on each side because on a clearer or a transparent piece of glass you can see through to where the foil is so we don't want to be able to see the other side of the foil if we can help it Sometimes if there is a piece that I can see, I'll trim it up with an X-Acto blade. And that's just to keep, to keep a nice silhouette for the glass. And then push pins in. There we go. Perfect. And then we'll work on the outside edges. And if I'm not mistaken, this is where our music died the last time. So, I'm not sure what's up with that again. We will eventually figure out how to do music on this. I promise. And then I put the outside piece in. We give it two push pins. And I take the push pins out once the piece is tack soldered. And I only do it then because I know that the pieces aren't going to move around on me. Um, they need to be secured before I can uh, maneuver the piece. So, uh, tack soldering gives it a decent hold. And that lets me just shift the piece enough so that I can... Um, flip it over to the other side if I need to, um, rotate it on the board, or just move it out of the way so I have a little more room. Uh, so on this piece here, I just have a little extra foil, so we just trim that off. And take it away. Um, 
but I love this blue glass right here. It's it's an older style cathedral glass that I haven't been able to really find again. So I've used it on only a cut on a couple pieces. Um, so I have this piece here. I have my uh, first version of my frost moon panel, which is a really cute little square. It's just, it's a really nice, like, darker blue, but it's also a really nice transparent blue. Uh, which usually, if you find a darker blue, it's an opaque, which is nice, but not every piece uh, lends itself to an opaque, opaque glass. Uh, sometimes you just want to see through, like, see what's behind, what's around you. You want that translucent nature that this type of glass lends. So cathedrals are really nice in that aspect. And they're just a little extra shimmery. Sometimes burnishing can be a little dangerous and like you slide off of the piece of glass you're working on and then it hurts. So this piece does have a, a gap already in it. I'm just going to take some of my older foil that I don't like uh, because I do have a pre uh, preference of foils that I do and don't like. Um, some foils are really thin and actually just shred when you go to burnish them. So it's not fantastic to use. And I'm going to roll those up and actually just stick those in the gaps. So it gives the piece a little extra integrity without wasting solder. So stained glass is a subtractive media, meaning that once you take it away, like once you cut a piece, once you grind a piece, that's it. That you you can't add more glass to to it without adding extra lines or just recutting a piece. And unfortunately, I don't believe I have any more of this particular blue left. So we just, we leave the gaps, unfortunately. Um, otherwise, it means I have to redo the entire piece. And sometimes I just don't want to do that. Um, especially if it's a color palette I really like. I just, I make do. Um, if I have small pieces in which I can add in the tiny chunks, I will. Um but usually I just add a little extra solder to it. And that's okay, it just gives it, uh, just gives it a little extra security over time. And we just snug it in and add in our push pins. And one more piece and this moon will be finished up. Ready to go for soldering, which we won't be doing yet. I want to get the other pieces um, foiled first. Um, I find it easier if I do 
the steps all at once like this on all of the moons versus trying to do uh, one step at a time or one moon at a time. Uh, it just, it doesn't work as well for me. Um, especially when I have to produce so many pieces. And where I do need to actually, you know, work methodically and get nine moons ready for Saturday, which is a lot of moons, um, especially of this particular size. It's just easier to do one step at a time on everything. So you do one step on all moons and then move on. And that's all right. Gets it done. Gets it out of the way. All right. And that one's looking good. So there's really only two decent sized gaps to fill in. And that's okay. All right. We'll work on... I'm going to do this moon here. It's just right in my way and I don't want to have it keep shifting everywhere so we'll just adjust the pieces a little bit so I can see where I need to set this one That'll be a good spot right there. And actually this one I'm going to do with the copper back. Um, I keep looking at it and as much as I like the silver foil and I use it for everything, this particular piece will get lost with silver. It's it's too much of a neutral for it and it needs that copper to just break up a little bit of the coloring. Um, plus I just think uh, pink and copper is a very nice, this particular pink will go really nicely with the copper. Um, I have uh, the apricot moon will probably go copper as well. The ocean moon will get copper. Um, the others will most likely stay silver. Uh, and the Van Gogh moon will get black when it's done. Um, I don't always patina a piece when I'm done with it. Um, It's just sometimes not always worth it. Um, not that it's not worth it, but the finish. Uh, just It sometimes distracts from a piece. Like I can always just drop a piece, you know. Um, but some pieces just look really nice in silver is what it comes down to. Um, like you can see how a piece is going to look in copper by using the copper foil. And you can usually judge, oh, that piece is going to be great in copper. Or, oh, I'm not using copper on that piece because it's just not going to look great. Um, like you can see this piece here. I could use copper, but I don't think it's going to look great in copper. I'm going to just use silver. And I think that'll look really nice. 
Um, if I need to, I can use like a black on it and wipe it off, like dry brush black, wipe it off real quick and get the, um, like that antique finish from it, which that could look nice. But, um, a lot of times I find people will use black, um, especially if they're new at stained glass because it tends to cover up like solder lines, especially if they're not confident in their lines. Um, because black hides everything. So, we're going to pull out the copper foil, which is right over here. I use my pin jar to hold this one down. And again, we'll start with the inner flowers and go and work our way out. Just line it up and fold it down. And yeah, this is going to look really nice in copper, I can tell already, just by looking at how the foil looks on it. Um, like, I can already... I, I've been doing this long enough, I can kind of tell my color palettes pretty early when... Um, when working on a piece, what's going to look well, like what's going to look good together, what's not. Um, I've noticed that when picking colors the other day, I'm like, yeah, these colors are great. And like, they really are turning out great together. Um, some others I'm like, mm, we're going to hold off on this because I just don't think this is the right piece for it. And I'm glad I did. Um, I'm really happy with all the colors I've picked so far for this for this particular set of moons. Um, I do know I need to get some more uh, clears at some point so I can play around with some of my more funkier colored pieces of glass that I have. Um, I have some really weird colors uh, that I picked up years ago and like it's hard to tell what color is going to work well with them because they're usually multicolored pieces. So I do know that clear will go well with almost anything um, depending on like the texture of it. Usually like a non-textured clear goes really well, but I'm currently saving all my non-textured clear for my next set of moons, um, which will have flowers pressed in them. Those will be pretty. Um, I'm getting ready to gather some more uh, flowers probably this week. We have some popping up. Um, so we have some violets. We have some little mayflowers, just some small flowers that I can throw in to my pressing book. And yeah, we'll make some pressed flower moons. Um, they'll be really nice. Uh, they're usually a big hit with people. They love them. And I'll do the center and completely clear so you can really get a good look at the flowers. And then I do... Uh, different colors on the outside. There. Uh, sometimes the push pins don't hold as well as I like them to, but that's just kind of their nature. They just don't always sit well within this particular type of board. But it's all good. We'll get them in there. We'll get them going. We're getting this moon done. Getting the board all stabby. Um, 
the one downside to foiling is you do tend to get little like foil cuts and foil burns all over your fingers um, because carpet foil is surprisingly sharp um, like I tend to cut myself more on foil than I do on the actual glass itself which I find hysterical because it doesn't seem like it should go in that way um, so you know just little things All right, so yeah, we're just keeping on foiling. Um, do let me know if you're noticing any buffering issues on the stream end. I am noticing that we're having, I keep getting uh, buffering alerts on my end. Um, so I don't know if it's my end that's uh, having a problem today or if it's uh, something else. So just do let me know um, if you notice any glitching or hiccups anywhere. Halfway done with these inner flowers. Ooh. There we go. I always have to keep rechecking everything, making sure that nothing slides like those flowers just did. Um, it's something they do. Uh, when uh, your first set of push pins don't stick how you want them to, the rest of the glass does have. Um, it will sometimes like start sliding around. That's why you need to make sure it's just really secured. Okay. All right. Uh, let, buffering issue might be fixed now. Um. So thanks, Zarku, for checking in on that. I'm going to make sure this particular leaf is a little extra secure because everybody's moving around on this one and I don't like that. So 
we'll see if that helps at all. Alright, that should keep it a little more stable in there. Let's so move on to finishing this next leaf, of the next petal. After a while, it just starts going along a little faster, a little smoother. Um, if we have to go somewhere, I'll sometimes take foiling projects with me. And just sit there and foil in the car, in a waiting room, wherever. Um, if I do that, I usually bring uh, every piece like individual piece, like, you know, each moon that I'd bring with me is in their own set of different set of baggies. Um, just so I don't have pieces get confused with each other. And I'll do each bag at a time, which is each moon at a time. And I'll just sit there, work away. Um, it's usually more amusing when I bring my Windex with me too. And just, you know, sit in a room or in a car, just cleaning away. Sometimes you get weird looks, but it's kind of the nature of things. Not everybody understands stained glass. Um. So a couple years ago, there was uh, that one craze where everyone was doing faux stained glass with uh, paints and everything. And um, so a lot of people, when they think of stained glass, they think of that at first, not actual taking sheets of glass, breaking it down, and then rebuilding those sheets into something new. So I follow like a lot of different glass groups online and one of them actually talked about how they had somebody clean a piece and uh, the color from the piece started wiping away and they didn't understand why. And at first glance, you didn't recognize it was not a um, stained glass piece like typical piece like this, um, but it was actually a faux glass piece. Um, so that was really interesting. There we go. All right, so all these pieces should start securing a little better now. I never actually got into doing that type of stained glass for some, like, I don't know. I guess that just never interested me. I guess I figured if you're not going to do it all the way, why bother at all? I don't know. I had, I had a very odd child mentality growing up. So, I mean, I still have a very weird mentality of process and all that. All right, got the two points done, and now we fill in the rest.
I really do uh, like not having to go around the entire piece. That actually does save a lot of time and effort. Uh, and actually saves a lot of uh, foil and it's going to save us so much solder. So when I go to solder this, the process will be actually doing most of the inside piece. Um, we'll be measuring and cutting the exterior and interior curved pieces, uh, giving them a stretch because uh, this particular um, lead does require a slight stretch just so it doesn't sag. Um, but I will be doing the majority of the soldering before we put the edging on. But once we're ready, we'll put the edge on and then finish soldering it the rest of the way. And then it'll be done. We'll put hook, uh, use three hooks two for hangers, one for the dangly bits. Um, I have most of the trees done already, um, courtesy of my mother-in-law. She is my tree lady. She makes them all for me. So we'll have those all set and ready for when I need them. Um, I will be making a special seashell uh, dangle for this one here. Um, I just have to look through, figure out how I want to make that. Um, while my mother-in-law does make my trees, I do some of I do wire wrapping as well, um, specifically on some of my smaller pieces. Um, or if there's something very specific I'm looking for, I'll usually uh, make that myself just so I know what my mind is thinking. Um, and I've just done that on a couple pieces because I'm like, no, no, I know exactly where my mind goes. And I know exactly what I'm looking for. Um, so that'll be nice um, to have all those trees done. I'm just going to make me a couple extra trees so we can try and sell those, see how that goes. Uh, she does make really lovely trees, though. I have one hanging up in my studio um, that's on a necklace that I'm going to bring with me this weekend. Um, but, yeah, all my trees she makes for me. Um, it started off like, hey, can you make this? She's like, I don't know. We'll try. Because she um, was making some jewelry for me. And it kind of started turning into trees. And, well, here we are a couple years later. And, yeah, no, she's still making trees for me. Um, you know, she's got her own style for them, which is great. And, like, they, they look really nice in the moons. They really do. Um, and I think that's another thing that makes my moons stand out um, is the fact that I add stuff like the wire wrap trees and I'll add crystals and gemstones and all sorts of fun things into them. It's not just a solid glass piece, which I have those and I will make those, 
but I also like to have fun with them. Alright, I have one more piece in this, I will call this a cherry blossom moon, because it really, really does remind me of the cherry blossoms. So on this side here, uh, the foil went a little off to one side, and I'm not super happy with how that looks. So we just trim the foil off. Just do a little trim, and there we go. Because this is actually the front side, so we don't want it super wide on the foil. Because a wide foil line means you have a very thick solder line, which is good for certain pieces but depending on how thick your line is to begin with it can wind up making it really thick and not great um, because it can overtake a piece There we go. Just give it another little smooth right along. And there we go. Pin it in place and on to the next. So the stuff that I'm cleaning off each of these pieces is just grinder dust, uh, so glass dust really. Um, sometimes when you grind, if you don't wipe the piece right away, you get residue from just wet grinder dust, and it just kind of sticks to the piece, and 
So you have to just clean it a little extra so that the foil doesn't have a problem sticking to it. Um, uh, the foil prefers a clean surface to stick to. Um, foil will also stick to a non-ground surface depending on what you're doing uh, with the piece. Um, I don't recommend doing a complete copper foil piece on non-ground glass though. Um, it's just too much surface area um, and not enough security for the foil. You really want the foil to be super secure when doing it. Because if the foil is not secure, your piece is just bound to fail. Um, I've seen it happen. I, I've had it happen. I've had pieces fail on me. Um, you know, I will have pieces fail on me. I know I will. Um, no matter how careful I become or how cautious I am, there's always going to be a piece that will fail at something. It's the, the nature of this media, it, it's inevitable that you will have something fail. Um, be it the hooks you use, um, the foil, you know, glass crack. the chain that you use to hang this from it's you know there's so many things that could go wrong but you know I think that's why I like this medium is you're just it's well it's beautiful for one I mean shiny glass pieces it's fun but you have all these challenges and variability and I don't know. It's just my medium, I guess. <laughs> All right. There's another piece cleaned. We're going to take a sip. We have lemonade today. There's little birds out there. They're happy as can be. All right. So this is our little ocean-themed... Sand and Surf Moon is, I guess, what we'll nickname this one. This one's also getting the copper. Um, this will be really nice in the copper finish. Um, silver's just not going to look great on this. It's going to really take away um, yeah, no. We want, we want copper on this one. It's going to be the finish for this piece. Just burnish our edges. So all the fit does is just help you burnish the foil smooth. And there's a couple different kinds. Um, I use a plastic one, though you can get wood ones and they're really nice. Um, I did have a wood one. I don't know where that ever went. I think it just like disappeared by the like the house gremlins. So who knows? Um, I once actually did several pieces using popsicle sticks because I wanted to use a wood one and well, I couldn't find it. So I used giant popsicle sticks like tongue depressors. It worked. It was fine. Um, I've also used pen caps before. 
I mean, they're not the best option to use, but they work in a pinch. Um, but you can get, like, foil rollers that, like, hand rollers that actually, like, you run your foil through and it burnishes at the same time. I don't know. They're kind of weird to me. But I'm also just very stubborn in my methods of glass. So, that's just, that's just me. I really like how I do things. Um, you know, I've had my methods for years. And after a while, you just get very set in your ways. And while it's hard to, like, change to new things, um, I do like the keeping traditional nature of these. Um, that's why I've really kind of studied the historical methods of doing this. Um, instead of, like, all the different ways of cutting corners and... Like, I know it's like, well, if you do it this way, you could, like, make it easier on yourself. Yeah, but while I could make it easier on myself, that's not exactly who I am, I guess. Um, but I also now need to, like, really, you know, think of how things go as, from a business perspective, you know, what is... What is optimal when running a business? So, there's a lot of trade-offs with that. So, it's like, you know, while this may be the method I prefer, is it really practical when you have to make, like, 40 pieces before your next event? You know, certain things, probably not. So, that's when you have to really, really realize that you actually have to try new things, go with the things that you don't actually want to do, and, like, pick different methods. We're going to trim this just a little bit. Well, not that little bit. There we go. That's looking quite lovely. I probably should order new bubble mailers tonight. So when I pack things, I pack with bubble mailers. Um, and that's just even for basic, like, event packing. Uh, it keeps everything organized. It just tidy right up. It's so nice. Um, but I am realizing I don't have enough bubble mailers 
for this weekend. So, I have a feeling we're going to be hitting prime shipping tonight to restock my packing supplies. Because I'm going to need a ton of bubble mailers. Um, I have enough for the big moons, but I do not have any for those tiny little guys. So we're going to just have to make some counts and, yeah, hope we have enough, like, get enough and hope they come in before Friday. So I can spend Friday packing my car and relaxing and working on stuff for next week's show. Um, that would be ideal, uh, is to have everything done so that I can pack and work for stuff for next week. Um, I'd like to start being able to have like weeks where it's like, all right, I can just go into production mode. I'd like to really have enough stock on hand that I can start selling online. Um, you know, get that, do a month, like a monthly, um, drop, shop drop, and just, you know, have a great time with that. Um, I think that's going to be a goal for like the end of May is to make sure that I can do a shop drop. I think that'll be goal. Um, so we'll have moons for that. Lots of moons. We'll have some windows. And yeah, I think we'll work for a drop. A little uh, shop drop for May. End of May. Um, and then we'll work on monthly shop updates for, you know, moving forward. Um, but our red bubble's always, always going. Um, we have tons of stuff on the red bubble. We really do. Um, we have stickers, we have mugs, we have some tote bags. Great little gifts. Um, you know, stuff that I can't always make in house. So we use red bubble. It just, it works for us. We will be uh, making some fantastic water bottles coming up. Um, I have designs already prepped. So keep an eye out for those. Um, I do a lot of vinyl work on the side that I don't post a lot of. Um, so we'll have some vinyl stuff going up. So we'll do a glass and vinyl shop drop, yeah, probably the end of May. Um, yeah, so uh, we're working on getting a Discord up and running. Um, we have the server saved. We're just figuring out the ins and outs of how to do Discord uh, for our needs. Um, it, it's a lot. Uh, we're learning a lot as we go. Um, today's only stream number four. Um, so, but you know, we're having fun. We're sharing our love of stained glass with everyone. We're meeting new friends. That's a, that's a big thing right there is meeting new friends. You know, sharing, sharing how stained glass is made, that's a huge thing. Um, I know uh, a lot of people haven't really seen stained glass made before, at least in this process. Um, All right.
right, so this one's almost done. Making lots of progress today. Foiling is just always, always tedious work. It's, it's a long process. It's, it's not always the fun process, but I enjoy the burnishing of it. I really do. Um, I don't know. That part always has been fun to me, just to watch the, um, the foil smooth right out. Oh, so, next time we'll be definitely, definitely soldering stuff up. Making sure everything's all lining up. Uh, sometimes you get foil that cracks on the side, so that's always uh, something you have to watch out for. I just had foil split on me, so... Uh, usually with that, what I'll do is, after I burnish it, I'm going to check it again, see if it fixes itself with burnishing. Uh, it sometimes does. Um, just being pushed a little bit. So if it doesn't, I usually go over it with, um, another piece of foil. This one might be okay. Yeah, no, this one actually is going to be fine. Like I said, it sometimes fixes itself after it's been moved around a little. Um, sometimes all you need is just a little warmth to it. The copper tends to do that more than anything else uh, because copper is the thinnest. The silver back and the black back tend to not split as much because they're a little thicker. They have that extra layer. Um, it seems like it shouldn't work that way, but for some reason I find it does. Um, but I also find that thinner foil in general just will split easier. Um, it's thinner, like any sort of pressure on it just will cause it to split. So it's not super fun when you realize you have a entire batch of thin foil as you're working and everything just is splitting or as you're burnishing it starts cracking. Um, like that's never fun. That's always a bad day. stretch the hands a moment give our back a stretch and keep on working so 
So we're almost done with this roll. We should actually finish, be just fine to finish this piece with it. Uh, we'll open a fresh roll with the next piece that needs copper foil. So that'll be fine and dandy. Two more pieces on the sand and surf, which is really quite lovely. It really is. So there's a bunch of different ways people do the, like this particular process. Some will cut each piece, grind that piece, foil it, uh, and then uh, put it right into their pattern. And they'll do that as they go. Um, that, I find, is a really tedious process. Um... It's, it's a long process to do something like that. Um, like, because you're taking each piece and then you have to grind it and then put it in the foil. I just cut all my pieces, grind them all, and then foil. Um, during the grinding process, I... If I need to recut a piece, I will then, um, or if I need to adjust how pieces fit in the pattern, I will. Um, and then I just let, depending on the pattern I'm doing, um, these ones here are really, really self-explanatory when it comes to foiling. Um, they really are. They're so straightforward it's like you just um, I'm not worried at all about these expanding my pattern um, or changing the layout at all uh, if I was doing a pattern that required uh, really precise measurements or really precise ways of being positioned then yeah I would um, you know, take the time, make sure everything's right where it needs to be. But for these ones, I don't get too worried. I just kind of roll with it. Oh, I noticed that I had a little too short of a piece on this one. So I'm just adding a little extra foil, trimming it. I mean, it's not exactly how I want it to be, so we're going to keep trimming it just a little more. Like, X-Acto blades are your friends in this. They really are. They trim up your foil so nicely, like just little pieces here and there. There we go. There we go. All right. 
right, we do have a little bit of foil left on this one, so we'll use that up. Hello there, Schritz Schritznilla. Please, uh, I apologize if I butchered that. Thank you. Yeah, these are uh, stained glass lotus moons of my own design. Um, I've been making stained glass for about 15 years now. Ha. Uh, I mean, he... I, I wouldn't test him. I mean, he he's a pretty fearsome D&D &D player. Alright, so we're going to do the Van Gogh Moon next. Uh, this one's going to be done in a silver foil, and I'm just going to keep cleaning it. This will probably be the, unless I really like how the silver solder looks on this, this will probably be the only moon I do in a black finish. Um... But we'll see kind of how it looks as we're going. But I'm quite excited for this one. Uh, when this one's done, I will be touching up the back of it with a little bit of paint. Um, just in case there's any, uh, any sort of rubs in the finish of the glass itself since that's where the um, there tends to be problems. We're going to step away real quick from the workbench to just check on something outside to make sure our neighbors aren't being stupid, so I'll be right back.
All right. Sorry about that. I am back now. Um, uh, we are under a burn ordinance where I live, and I could smell somebody burning. So that's always fantastic. So. We're just going to keep... I just wanted to make sure it wasn't one of our neighbors being stupid again. That's happened before. Um, so, we're just going to keep working. And, yeah, we'll see. But yeah, so we're just going to keep on cleaning this moon up so we can foil it, get it ready. Uh, we're a third of the way done. We're getting there. We're making progress. Um, progress is always good. Moving in the right direction. Getting stuff done. Getting all the things made. Oh, this piece is really dirty. Uh, that's that's why I always clean all my pieces before I um, foil them. Is you know that piece was really dirty and foil actually wasn't going to stick to that with the amount of glass dust on it. So that was that was a good idea. I mean, it's always a good idea to clean each piece. So here we go. Just gonna. Move this off to the side for now. We'll switch this one over here. Just make it a little easier. And let us begin with this Van Gogh moon. And as most people on this stream that frequently visit me know, um, I am a fan of this Van Gogh glass. It's just my favorite. Um... All the colors, all the textures, I love them all. Um, so this particular set that I'm using here, uh, I just recently got in. This was from a Facebook sale. So that was, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to get. Um, they were selling a bunch of large scrap pieces. So... You know, I took a little bit of a gamble, and we're like, all right, let's see what we can get. And I got some really nice pieces out of this. Um, so. Huh, could look nice in copper. That was a bit of, And that's, you know, that happens. Like, you start foiling, and you're like, oh, well, that's a thing. Um. But another fun thing about uh, the finish of glass is I could do multiple finishes if I wanted to. Like, you can combine silver, copper, and black patina into a single piece. Um, just with the fact, if you're super careful on using your paint brushes wisely and just, you know, working cautiously and carefully. But, oh, that... That could be nice. Oh, goodness, folks. I now have thoughts to do because, hmm, we might be changing up. We might be changing what I thought we were doing. Hmm. So that's, that's a thing. I mean, I, I'm not really surprised that usually happens to me. I'm like, oh, hey, we're going to change up what we're doing while we're doing it. Um, all right, yeah, we'll pin this one right here. So glasses like to do that, surprise you with how you think it's going to look versus how it actually looks. Um, 
I was cutting some pieces last night and I picked out a piece that I thought was going to be more of a clear glass. Turns out it had very subtle like cotton candy effect to it. So there was pink, there was yellow, there was purple, there was blue. And I'm like, well, this is really unexpected, but I like it. Um, like, I really liked how that glass looked. So I'm using it in one of my little mini windows, and it's going to be part of the unicorn window. Um, with a... It's paired with a pr really deep purple that has some uh, yellows running through it, which is really, really nice effect. Yeah. Um, but I just, I love glass and the way the light changes everything. Um, one of my favorite days that I can remember from college was actually our um, color theory lesson that we did uh, using additive and subtractive light with color and how it kind of changed everything I knew about color. Um, so yeah, that like changed everything I thought about color. I'm like, oh, well that's different now. Alright, so just working on these. I'm getting really hyped up for Saturday, actually. Um, I have someone picking up some more jump rings for me so I can finish the necklaces that I have ready to go. Um, I just have to now put all the charms on them, which won't take too long. But I ran out of jump rings today. So I'm like, well, can't exactly finish those up without jump rings. So I'm like, oh, they're going to go pick some up for me this afternoon. And I'll be able to finish those up tonight. Um, so that'll be nice. Get those ready. Get those done. I have a bunch of shield pendants I want to start working on, and I'll probably wait until next week to make those. Um, just because I don't have, I don't think I have enough time to get any made um, to, and get them to the caliber that I want them to be. So I'll probably do the shield pendants next week, so we might just do a day of shield pendants. Um, and I'll probably do the whole process of like putting those together. So we'll probably have like a jewelry making day essentially next week. Um, 
though I did uh, pick up a part-time job, so that'll be nice. Um, I'll be working at a candy shop in the mornings, but I'll still be able to do plenty of streaming in the afternoons or evenings, depending on which I choose. Um, so I'll be able to keep on with this as well as pay the bills. Um, I didn't intentionally do become a full-time artist. It just kind of happened. So we're like, oh, we're doing a thing. So I'd been looking for a part-time job for a little while now. Uh, and I go next week to begin my part-time job as a, as a candy girl, essentially. So that'll be nice. It'll be fun. Gets me out of the house for a little bit. I don't like this particular way this uh, foil fell in just one section here. So what I do is I rip off a small section and we just kind of place it over like so. Um, I am one of those people who does not actually cut my foil. I just rip it. Um, I've lost scissors so many times, like, I I lose count how many times I've lost my scissors while trying to do things, so uh, the foil is soft enough that it's really easy to rip it. Um, quick easy patch job right there, I do need to trim the back up, but I, yeah, I don't cut my foil, I just rip it. It's faster. I don't have to try and, like, find scissors. Um, when it comes time for holidays and wrapping gifts, um, I lose my scissors more often than anything else. So, when doing this, I don't even bother with scissors because I will lose them. And if I have to keep track of too many things, I get overwhelmed and I just, I don't. So, the fewer things I have to worry about at one particular time, the better I am because I just want to do what I need to do, get things done, and... You know, just make make what I need to make. Uh, when I have as much stock that needs to be made as I need to make, um, you know, ripping the foil versus cutting it is one way I can start saving time. And I have a bunch of lovely birds singing outside my window. That was, that was a hand slip there. That happens a lot.
The only downside with having to reach across now is I get stuck on all my push pins. But it's all right. It means everything's stuck in place, and it is. It is what it is, and it's going to be fine. Yeah. All right, we're making making lots of progress today, and I like progress on these. So now that I have to really kind of reach across the table to pin these down, um, on the outside pieces, I'm just going to foil, burnish, and then I'll kind of pin them all down as a group. Um, and that might just save me a little bit of time. Uh, speed it up just a smidge, maybe. I don't quite know. We'll see. Again, if anyone has any questions about what I'm doing, the process, what I'm using, um, how I got into stained glass, feel free. Um, And you can uh, go to my link tree. You can find all my socials, which has my Facebook, my Instagram, um, all of my different shops that I have open, um, my TikTok, if you want to watch the funny video. Well, not really funny, but, you know, any of the videos I put out, um, which are really just, you know, product promo videos of the things I currently have, things I'm working on. Um, Sometimes I'll post, you know, videos or pictures of the studio cat. Um, he usually makes his appearance towards my, the end of my streams. Um, if he's feeling, if he's feeling up to it. We don't always force the cat to do what he doesn't want to. Um, but, you know, if he's. If he's up to it today, we'll see if we can get the cat on for a little bit.
the next moon we'll work on will be the apricot moon which has been a really fun piece of glass to work with uh, it's just a gorgeous color um, especially with that background Uh, it's been breaking better than I anticipated it to, so that makes me happy. I just know sometimes the uh, vintage glasses or the one-of-a-kind glasses sometimes um, are unpredictable in the way they work. So the fact that it's cooperating is very nice and appreciative. Not really liking how this piece uh, foiled on this corner so I'm just gonna redo this corner real quick so I'll have to trim maybe I won't have to trim that up I'll have to trim the back up the back's a little gross looking um, even though this particular glass you're not going to see the back of it I still always trim the back of it, um, of the foil. I make sure the back looks presentable. You don't want to, you, you always want to make sure it looks nice. You really don't want to just have it done halfway. Um, it's really unprofessional. It's, so just, you know, trimming up just that little bit right there. Trim up a little more. There we go. Give it a better corner. And just make it look... Definitely make it look more professional. One more piece, and then we'll pin all those little pieces down. And get moving on to the next one. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll use my fingernail to start a burnish on the glass. Um, like just to manipulate the foil a little bit, get it to where I need it to move. And then I just take the fid and finish it up the rest of the way. Um, just because I can get more pressure with the fid. And I like where that looks and we'll pin this down. Move my jar of pins a little closer, and off we go. Not gonna lie, push pins really do hurt. Like, the amount of force needed to actually push them in where I want them to go can be really uncomfortable.
I'm going to check my messages real quick. It looks like I have a client message. All right, maybe not. Okay. And take a little more drink, hydrate just a little more. All right, let's go on to the next moon. This is my cute little apricot moon. Um, I will be making a uh, second one, a smaller version of this one, the mini uh, lotus moon. Um, so I'll have that available for people if they want a smaller one. I just know a lot of people don't always have the room for um, the larger moons depending on where they live. Um, you know it's not always easy to have big pieces. But that's why I tend to make a lot of the different sizes. Um, I just know people tend to like having options. Um, ooh, just realized this glass has a fun little texture on the back. That's cool. Alright, so this piece is now all nice and clean. So, for this one we're switching out as I drop pieces. Uh, we're switching out to the copper foil. I'm going to stick this piece right on top. Readjust these tiny little wounds that are tipping over over here. We'll finish up with this piece here. Take this out. Let's see how much we got left on you.
So with this one, I'm... I want to do copper, but I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to do copper now that I'm looking at it. Because this copper really blends in with the apricot. Um, so I'm not sure if I like it 100% or not. Um, so that's another thing. It's like you'll start doing a piece and you're going to be like, oh, I don't actually like how this looks. Um, but by doing the copper back, I'm not too concerned um, because the copper blends really nice with the glass. So it'll look fine in the background. Um, even if I decide not to do actual copper foil on it, like a copper finish, we'll see. Um, like I said, I'm not 100% sold. But once I solder it, see how it looks in silver, I'll probably change my mind. That's usually the way it goes. Um, and I have just enough left on this roll to finish this piece perfectly. Excellent. I'm going to pull out my new roll of Studio Pro Foil. <sighs> so it has a great little pull here tab, except the foil itself is not actually attached to this pull here tab. The end of the foil is over here. Maybe if I wiggle it or... No, that's not going to do. Such a great idea in theory. Such a great idea. And at that point, it just becomes easier to do this with the foil. It really does. Um, while, yes, it would just be so much easier to keep it in that in the little case that it came in. And just, you know, keep pulling it through that little end roll. That'd be so much easier. But in the end, it's just trying to get it to go where I need it to go and just yeah no I don't have brain power for that I really don't so we're just gonna we're just gonna do it this way it's fine And, yeah, that'll be fine.
There we go. Time for burnishing, and they're good to go. Right on track. So I'm not quite pinning these down yet. I wanted to get these um, foiled first. Yeah. Also, let my fingers have a slight rest from push pins, even for a few minutes. So we're just going through burnishing up this piece. We're at just about four moons out of our nine done, so we're almost halfway there. got this one going here almost I love these really like small pieces of foil that I get to do on like the end pieces of the moon just because most of this piece is going to be um, the lead um, edging so it's like oh I'm done that's nice I, I do appreciate stuff like that. So, it's going to be nice to try something new. Um, I think it's going to give a really nice finished look to these. While I have been soldering the edges by hand for years, I think just it's going to give it more strength in the long run. It's just, it's going to make it an overall really finished piece. And it's going to, um, it's going to add another level of professionalism to what I'm doing. Which is nice. Um, that's kind of what I'm going for. 
we're definitely striving for that this year more so now than ever before um, we signed up for a really big event Labor Day weekend so I'm excited about that it's called Art in the Park and it's two days over Labor Day weekend so I'll be setting my stuff up and just chilling out in our local I think it's an Arboretum Park. Um, it's a fancy park. Um, they did just get rid of their gazebo they had. And um, changed it out for a uh, pagoda kind of thing. The Interact and... I guess, yeah, the Interact Clubs of two of the local high schools uh, worked together. And built it. Um, it looks really nice. Um, so that'll be nice. I know the gazebo that had been there had been a little, little on the sketchy side for a long time, but I think it was starting to slowly die over the years. Um, Unfortunately, I know a lot of, um, just the area I live in, we have a, you know, we have a bit of a homeless problem, and I know a lot of homeless people, um, have used that as a place to sleep over the years, so I'm sure that hasn't helped the integrity of it, um, after all these years, but... Um, so it looks nice. I'm interested to see where I'll be. I will know, um, probably come, I think it said July is when the deadline is, but being a member of the Monadnock Area Artists, Artists Association, um, and having done this event before, um, I was able to just sign right up pay for it um, so I'll be all good to go um, I'm one of the few glass artists that will be there which I do like um, it makes me stand out a little bit more um, la one of the last times I've done it I did it as a watercolor artist and that was cool um, it was great you know it was a great, it, it was a great exposure thing for me to just get out there, do it. Um, however, I sold like next to nothing all weekend. Um, so that was like, okay, do I want to do this event ever again? Um, so I didn't do it the next year. Uh, but this year I decided, no, no, let's try it again. We're doing the glass work. This is what our this is what our focus is. This is what our passion is. This is you know this is what our calling is to do right now. So let's let's do it. Um, you know this is this is where we're meant to be. Um, this is where I'm meant to be right now is doing this, um, sharing my story, showing what I do. And, you know, seeing what I can make from this. Um, I have the greatest support team a person could ask for right here. Um, like, my husband's just cheering me on from the other room. And just doing, you know, helping me as I need running, um, letting me, letting me follow my dreams right now. Um, so that's kind of cool. That's not kind of cool. It's really cool. Um, you know, my family supporting me in all the different ways they can. So I'm trying this, seeing where it goes. 
you know, doing all the different events that I can get into. Um, actually, next weekend, I technically have two events, so that's a thing. Um, luckily, one of them I don't have to be there in person for. Um, I just have to drop my stuff off and, you know, see what happens. Uh, with luck, I will sell all those pieces that I bring down. Um, I mean, it's only five, but if if I can sell all five, that would be that'd be amazing. That would be what I would need right now. <laughs> um, you know, we're definitely pushing the fact that our commissions are open right now. Um, You know, special orders, whatever. You know, they're open. They're available. Um, we're going to start picking up to end here for now. Um, we got some stuff we have to do tonight. So we're just going to end here. Um, I like to end my stream around 5 o'clock if I can. I know sometimes I stream a little later than that. Um... Uh, we'll see how we are for streaming tomorrow. I have to take my husband to an appointment, so we'll see what the day goes, how the day goes for that. We will definitely be here on Thursday for streaming. Um, uh, hopefully by then I'll have everything all foiled, pinned down, and ready to go. So the goal for Thursday... Uh, Thursday's goal is to start the soldering process. Um, so that's the big goal for Thursday is we're going to solder. Uh, unless I do anything tomorrow, uh, we might start at least tax soldering, getting stuff organized. Um, if anything, tomorrow we will uh, complete all the little mini windows. Um, those are pretty pretty simple. They're just squares with the great little, great little charms hanging through them. Uh, I want to thank everyone that stopped by today. I want to say thank you to all of our new followers we had. Uh, but yeah, check out our socials. We have links down in the link section below. Um, if you want to check out our Kofi account, you can buy us a coffee. You can see about our details for ordering commissions. Um, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on TikTok. We have an Etsy, a Store Envy, and a Redbubble. Um, all three shops do have a few things in them. Our Redbubble has all of our digital stained glass work. And we are adding more to that uh, as time goes on. Um, but thank you all for stopping by today and hanging out with us. Um, we're hope, like I said, we will see what tomorrow brings for streaming. We'll see how everything goes. Um, but yeah, thank you all for coming by and I hope you have a fantastic evening. <laughs>